What's going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about and breaking down the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here, heading into the third week of September in 2019. I also want to go over the stock market futures with you guys and talk about my opinion on where the market could be headed here over these next couple of days. We'll break down some scenarios and talk about some key things to keep an eye out for this week. So if you enjoy this video, if you find value in this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you want to see further content involving the stock market, trading, investing. This is the channel for you, and let's get right into it, guys. So right now, the ES slash ES, the E-mini S&P 500 index futures, they are down 0.36%, down $11 nearly. And for those of you guys that don't know, Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the futures futures markets open. So you can see where the s and is trading, the Dow, the NASDAQ, crude oil, which saw a big pop today. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes here. You know, gold, silver, natural gas, and a bunch of other ones. So you can start to do your analysis at night on Sunday to start preparing for the next week. That's what I personally do. And that's what has helped me in the stock market, especially with understanding how everything moves and so forth. So the Dow Jones future, if we take a look at it very quickly is currently down 80 points down 0.29 percent the nasdaq futures right now are down 0.55 percent the most out of the three down 43 points so this is simply a pullback in my opinion in terms of these major markets right if you notice on all of the charts here on the 184 hour um, time frame you guys can see the es and the nasdaq i'll double check for the Dow very quickly, but you can see the ES and the NASDAQ for sure, they're holding that 50 SMA support on this little gap down. So that leads me to believe as of right now, you know, this is a point in time where we're just simply pulling back, we're simply cooling off, and we're maintaining a higher low on the ES and the NASDAQ, right? You guys can see it as well. And let me just double check on the Dow Jones. You guys can see again, okay, Dow Jones as well. We're pulling back down and we're, it seems like at, at this point in time, we are holding that 50 SMA. And notice how all the RSIs, they're coming back down to a healthier spot. So this is a good sign. Healthy pullbacks are great if we're looking at indexes, you know, futures, stocks, ETFs, whatever it may be. Anything that's going up aggressively, we would like to see eventually a nice healthy pullback so we can maybe hop into some market ETFs, some stocks that dip down as the index is pulled down etc. Right. So if we're looking at a couple of other key technical points for this upcoming week before we do end up hopping into the analysis here, keep an eye on the S&P at around three thousand dollars, three thousand twenty five. We are approaching those all time highs and you guys can see we are getting rejected under this level at about three thousand fifteen. And with the futures being down, that leads me to believe that we're going to open up if the futures do hold this red state that they're in, we're going to open up red tomorrow, putting us maybe somewhere around here, right? So if we're trending down tomorrow, keep an eye on 29.50, or rather not 29.50, 29.90, which is the support that is coming up for the S&P 500. If we're going on the NASDAQ right now, guys, if we pull down tomorrow... You know, keep an eye on 77.50. That is the up and coming support if we break below the 50 SMA support tomorrow, right? So that's a level to keep an eye on. But if we break out, you know, a resistance that I'm watching on the NASDAQ is 8,000. Going back on the S&P, obviously the resistance is at all time highs. You know, if we gap up, start to break into 3020, we may be going to all time highs this upcoming week. And for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, guys, we're pretty much at all time highs right now on Friday we closed about 130 uh, more like 160 points below those all-time highs and with the uh, uh, rather the Dow gapping down right now we may be going back down to test maybe $27,000 flat before we end up maybe going back up and retesting those all-time highs but just keep an eye on the futures guys because they can turn green in the snap of a finger just because they're red right now that does not mean that the markets are going to be red tomorrow 
tomorrow, but just keep an eye on them, right? Pre-market, later tonight, I just think it's a great idea to just have your eyes on them and understand where they're pushing, and uh, that'll help you plan out your trades accordingly, right? So over the weekend, we got some pretty crazy news regarding crude oil, and I'm pulling up my phone right now so I can read it word for word exactly from this article so I don't miss anything. A very just quick excerpt of what ended up happening, and that actually will lead to what I'm watching to trade for this upcoming week very closely. So Saturday's attacks on key Saudi Arabia processing plants will test the world's ability to handle a supply crisis as it faces the temporary loss of more than 5% of global supply from the world's biggest crude oil exporters. So oil prices will react when markets open after an attack on a key Saudi production facility amid uncertainty over how much global supply will be disrupted. So the supply was disrupted, right? That means prices are going up, right? Investors, they're also bracing for another interest rate cut, which could also lead to the fuel and the fire for whatever the market ends up doing this upcoming week, which we're also going to be talking about in this video. So not to get into this too deep, guys, but a plant was attacked, right? A plant was attacked. Oil is spiking right now heavily, right? And we all know what's been going on with oil. It's been crazy recently, crude oil especially, right? From $66 in April all the way down to $50 and back up all the way to $60 in July. We went all the way back down in the beginning of August to $50 again. And now with this massive gap up from $54 where we closed on Friday, we gapped up all the way to $63, guys. When the futures market opened, crude oil was up 14%. So hypothetically right now, guys, if you were to buy UWT, which is an ETF that goes up whenever crude oil is going up, you would be up if that level held at 14%, you know, for crude oil, the gap up, you would be up 45% on your position on Monday morning, again, if that 14% gap upheld, and right now it's not holding, it's up about 11%, so if the markets were to open now, hypothetically, you'd be up 33% on UWT because it goes up three times what crude oil is going up, which is absolutely crazy, right? I don't think I've seen a move like this on crude oil in a while, right? The other biggest move that you guys can see on this chart was probably when it went from $60 all the way down to to about $50 in the span of a week. But I guess this move is bigger because it went from $54 to $63 in the snap of a finger literally over a weekend, right? So crude oil is definitely going to be on the top of my list this week. And UWT and DWT, those two inverse pairs, or rather that inverse pair, not two inverse pairs, that is going to be what I'm watching to trade this week heavily, right? Because if we get a gap down on crude oil today, as it looks like it's already happening, or rather this week, right, because we spiked up so heavily, you know, we could play the downside on crude oil by trading DWT, which goes up whenever crude oil is selling off. And you'd imagine how much DWT is going to be down tomorrow. It's going to be down 20 to 30% at least if crude oil holds these levels. And that could be a very, very good play for those that like chasing extremely oversold stocks, ETFs, just very battered down stocks and ETFs for a potential bounce back play. Because again, if crude oil does does end up seeing a bit of a dip, maybe into the high 50s, 58, 59, whatever it may be. There's honestly no way it's going to go back down to the low 50s again at this point due to this attack on the uh, on the plant, right? But if it does see a little pullback, you know, DWT is definitely worth watching, which again goes up three times whenever crude oil is selling off. So if crude oil sells off 2%, DWT is going to be up roughly 6%, right? But let's say this crude oil mini pullback back that we're seeing right now from about 64 to about 61, wherever we're, we are at right now, or rather from 63 to about 61, let's just say this is a little pullback, right? We hold 60. We could end up filling the gap up to $63, no problem, especially, you know, you know, honestly, if this situation with the oil gets worse, right? If we go up to $63, that's a 5% move, and that equals roughly a 15% move in UWT 
median. We're also in this channel right here from around $60 to $63 where we filled that gap easily in the beginning of May to the end of more rather the middle of May, you know, in about a 13 day span a couple months ago, we went from 60 to 63. So this pull down to $60 might be good for it to retest that level and then, and then potentially pop and fill the gap, which would lead me honestly trading UWT, which is why I'm watching it very closely. So there are a couple of different scenarios this week for trading crude oil. Um, those are it. I think honestly, now that we're getting this pull back and of course we'll watch what happens pre-market i just think uwt is going to be bullish here um, in the short term. That's just what my gut is telling me, and uh, that's just what I'm thinking as of right now. And of course, I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that. Don't be shy. Drop a comment down below in the comment section. So UWT, DWT, those are the top ones, no doubt, for this upcoming week, as I do expect crude oil to be extremely volatile. Natural gas also gapped up today, broke a resistance at $2.65. That's very, very bullish here. We're up to 2% right now, up 0.05, or rather just 5 cents, honestly, if you just read it just uh, the way it is, 5 cents up right now in natural gas, and if it holds this level, UWT is going to be up, or rather UGAS, which goes up whenever natural gas goes up, it's going to be up around 6% if natural gas does hold these levels, and the fact that we did break 265, guys, it is now time to draw out the next resistance, which at this point in time, it's going to be right where I just drew for you guys at $2.70 to around $2.71-ish cents. Right around there is where I'm looking for for it to potentially fill up because again, we've broken resistances after resistances over the past couple of weeks and every time we've done that, we fiddled around that new support for a couple of days and then we've ultimately popped up to new highs and thus breaking the next resistance, right? So now that we gapped up, we're going to see potentially a pullback, maybe a hold at 265 for a couple of days, maybe even one or two days, and then a quick pop to refill up to 272. And from there, if we pop 272 above 272, where could we be going next? And I'll show you guys what I'm looking at, probably around $2.76 to around $2.77 for natural gas. So that's kind of what I'm looking at right here, guys. This is very bullish, the fact that we broke that. I can't really Really, um, pound that in your heads enough. So watch you guys to be a runner this week. That is what I am thinking. If we just look at you guys very quickly, you know, if natural gas holds where it's at, this one should be gapping above $23 tomorrow morning, no problem, right? So if we gap above $23, you know, this 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 thing could be going to $25 in the matter of a couple of days easily, right? Last week, we talked about you guys going to $20. It hit $20 easily, right? And now, if we're just looking at this one, you know, on the 90-day, on the two-hour, you can see some upcoming levels being $25, like I just said, right? So watch out for the U gas gap up the break above 23 the hold on that new uh new support and then from there potentially you know if natural gas fills up to 272 like we just said a couple of minutes ago this one could pop up fill it at 25 bucks and if i just pull out my little trend line tool we can see that's going to be at at least a nine a nine to ten percent um profit potential on you guys guys so those are what i'm watching this upcoming week for sure top two no doubt about it right so uh, gold right now is actually seeing quite a bit of a pop as well this is up around one percent right now 0.83 percent to be exact up twelve dollars and thirty cents at the time that i am recording this video at about 7 30 p.m eastern standard time on the 15th of september so gold broke a critical level of support i think this was last week i don't really recall what day it was it doesn't really matter it was on the 8th to the 9th of september um so so about a week ago at this point, um, we broke this 180 SMA support, which was very bearish in my opinion, um, due to the fact that we've honestly held that level as a support over the past couple of months, right? And it seems like now we're still trending below the 180 SMA. Seems like we got rejected by it again this past week. We're trending below the 50 SMA on the four-hour chart. So honestly, until we get a pop out of here, guys, 
this is not going to be one that I'm looking to trade, um, or rather, Jay Nug is not going to be one that I'm looking to trade, which trades based upon the overall movement of gold, and it goes up whenever GDX is going up, and GDX is a gold ETF, right? So this one, you guys can see it's not looking too bullish whatsoever, right? This is not looking too good. And again, JNUG is going up 3x what GDX is going up. And you can see the chart is pretty much the same because it, it does follow, um, you know, very similar technicals, right? So if gold, I'm thinking at this point, guys, if we get a red market this week, which honestly, with the potential rate cut on the 17th of September, I think it's the 17th of, of September. Let me just check. Either way, it doesn't really matter what day it is. All you have to know is that it is this week. It's on Wednesday, so it's not the 17th of December, uh, uh, September. It's probably the 18th of September. We're going to get potentially, we all think at this point, I think I read online, it was like 78% of investors think we are going to get a 25 basis point rate cut, right? Let's say a similar scenario happens as to what happened the last time we got a rate cut. The market sold it, right? Sold the news. The, the markets actually drop. So let's say we get a rate cut and then the markets drop, right? Let, that's very possible because the markets are potentially pricing in a rate cut right now. So let's say we get the rate cut and then the markets drop, right? Gold might pop at that point because gold typically does well when the markets are going down. Hence why gold futures are up nearly nearly 1% right now while the rest of the market Nasdaq S&P Dow they're red right so there's kind of a, a correlation between gold up markets down markets up gold down there's kind of a correlation there it's not always that accurate but for the most part, that's how it moves, right? So if we get the rate cut, the market sells the news, markets drop, gold can definitely see a bullish pop here. And a bullish pop would be if we broke out of both moving average resistances here on the four hour chart. And at that point, GDX might go up, right? Because it follows gold. And then what would go up then? JNUG, right? So JNUG, it's looking like a falling knife, no doubt about it. But Guys, just watch the markets. If we get a pullback, it's going to happen at some point. JNUG has just a lot of room to run. It can literally see a 10% day. I think we've seen moves in JNUG upwards of 15 to 20% in one single day, but that just heavily depends on how well gold does for that specific day. But just watch it, guys. It never hurts to watch gold because it's just a way to play the market when the markets are going down for the most part, right? So those are or those are really just the gold ETFs that I'm watching, you know, GDX, gold in general. Let's talk about some stocks very quickly now, guys. Some stocks that I'm honestly involved in. If you guys have been watching the videos, AT&T and ATVI, these are two that I'm personally swing trading right now. So in a nutshell, ATVI, I'm in this one at around 55.10, and I want to add more money into it as we confirm the break above 56, 57 dollars, and honestly, a break into this next channel between 56 to around 62 dollars. Right, my goal is to add more money at around 57 dollars right now, and I'll explain to you guys why. Right, we can see. We broke up to 57. I believe this was on Thursday. We failed to hold that new support at about 56. We broke below it, but the positive thing was we held this trend line as well as this 50 SMA that you guys see here on the hourly chart. So tomorrow, ideally, what I'd like to see here on ATV, right? would be a pop like I'm showing you guys right now with my trend line. This would be ideal what I just drew out, right? A pop into 56, 56, 50. If we get to 57, I might add money, right? But ideally, I just want to get into this next um, channel. I want to hold this new support. And then I honestly want to just want it to just continue to trend up into the 60s. Right now, my goal sell is around $60. Is it going to get there this week? Probably not, right? That's why I'm going to give it some wiggle room. That is the goal as of right now. And the fact that I'm already up on the position, that feels comfortable for me to hold it, right? And the more that I get up in the position, that is when I'm going to really put a trailing stop loss on it to protect those profits. And a trailing stop loss is great, especially when you're swing trading. Let's say you run out to do an errand, you're at work, whatever it may be, you're busy, you can't watch your screen, but you're up on a position and you want to protect it. Put a trailing stop loss, 0.5%, whatever it may be. And if the stock goes down that, you're not going to lose your profits or rather if the stock 
goes down 0.5%, it'll just sell and you'll make the profits, right? But let's say you didn't have the trailing stop loss and it just went down 10% that day. You didn't have the trailing stop loss. You pretty much just lost all of your gains at that point, which would suck, right? So AT&T is the other one that I'm involved in right now and I'm watching for this upcoming week to add more money into, right? On a technical basis, it's not looking as great as ATV, but I still feel confident in AT&T this upcoming week due to the positive catalyst we got last week that popped it up to $40. A hedge fund, Elliott, I think it was like Elliott Management, I think they're called or something like that. They took a $3 billion stake in AT&T with a price target at $60. I do think this will be a positive catalyst in AT&T over these next couple of weeks. So I'm Honestly, this short dip below the 50 SMA, I'm not sweating it too much because overall, we're still holding a nice higher low um, uptrend at this point. We are, we could just be seeing, honestly, a, a bit of a, a cool off period here as the RSI is starting to head down. So I'm going to give this one some wiggle room heading into this upcoming week. Uh, honestly, I just feel comfortable holding this one. Um, and that's it, right? at and I'm watching this one for the potential continuation. You know, if we get up to 38 bucks, we could fill up the 40, which could be um, a very, very uh, feasible trade this upcoming week of around 3%. So Facebook, FB, this is another one that I'm watching that's on the verge of a breakout here, in my opinion, guys, especially if we break into the $190 range. $190 here, if we break this resistance, what are we breaking? We're breaking a resistance from back in the April to May months of 2019. And what happened the, the, the last time we broke 190, 195-ish? We ran all the way up to 216. This is when they reported earnings. I know you guys remember this day because I made a video this day and Facebook stock was up like 10, 15% after hours, which was ridiculous, right? And that is something I think can ha definitely happen, especially since we're holding this trend line, right? Facebook is not too affected by China because it really has no business in China. So the trade war doesn't affect Facebook too much. Although if it affects the overall market, it might affect Facebook a little bit. It because you know Facebook's a massive company but in terms of a direct exposure to China there's really none there in terms of Facebook but if we get to 190 guys what is that going to tell me well that's going to pop us above here so that's going to be a confirmation of the support on the 50 SMA if we move up here that's going to be a bullish cross the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA and especially if we break 190 that's like three confirming factors to get into Facebook and uh, ride it as a swing trade at this point, right? Especially if the markets, you know, if the markets react well to the uh, interest rate cut, 25 basis points, you know, the markets fly up. Facebook can easily be in, in the 190s this upcoming week, guys. Trust me on that. So... Overall, that's honestly what I'm watching for this upcoming week, right? This upcoming week, I'm being a bit more cautious than a lot of the other weeks that we've been trading together in the markets as a team in the Discord, individually, whatever it may be, right? I'm being very, very cautious because the interest rates, this is going to be huge on Wednesday, whether we get a cut. We are definitely getting a cut at this point. There's no way the Fed were to come out and be like, we're not cutting interest rates. If that were to happen, guys, expect the markets to tank. The markets will 100%, maybe not 100%, 90% they will tank if we don't get an interest rate cut. If we get a 25 basis point cut, the markets might sell the news like they did last time. They might stay the same, really not react at all, or they might pop up, which I don't really think is going to happen because, again, this, this is most likely priced in. So just keep an eye on all these different things, the oil situation, interest rates, watch crude oil, watch natural gas. They seem to be very affected right now with the whole situation um, going on. Watch gold. This is what I'm watching this upcoming week, guys. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. I'd love to know what you're thinking. What are your thoughts on the market? Oil, interest rates, just let me know, guys. Stocks are trading. I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, and consider subscribing if you want to see further content involving the stock market, trading, investing. This is the channel for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, thanks for watching. Good luck this week. Peace out.